News that gripped the entire country. A president shot and killed and a massive manhunt to find the killer. History books tell us that John Wilkes Booth was captured and killed at a Virginia farmhouse. But some argue the man buried in Baltimore is not Booth and that he actually died right here in Oklahoma. That's right. News9.com's Darren Brown traveled to Enid where some say the Booth legend is not a legend at all. Oklahoma connected to Lincoln's assassination. Well, it's a story over 100 years in the making. The family of John Wilkes Booth, Lincoln's assassin, believed that Booth didn't die at Garrett's farm as is widely believed, but escaped and worked his way south to Mexico, back up through Texas and to El Reno, Oklahoma, under the alias of David E. George. George committed suicide in Enid, Oklahoma in 1903 by drinking wine laced with poison. Just so happened that the former Methodist pastor in El Reno and his wife were now pastoring in Enid. And in 1900, uh, a couple of years before his death, uh, David George had almost died in El Reno. And the Methodist minister's wife was tending to him as a nurse. And it was then that he confessed to being John Wilkes Booth. So when she read in the paper that David George had died uh, here in Enid, she says, honey, is this the David George we knew who confessed to being John Wilkes Booth? Turns out it was. And from there, the story gets even more confusing. There's a supposed letter that George wrote before he died to an attorney friend of his in Memphis. The letter disappeared. There's also the mummy. George's mummified body was actually displayed at a funeral parlor in Eden for years before traveling the country as a sideshow attraction. One fact that's not disputed is that there was a David E. George that died in Eden in January of 1903. And even back then, there were those who wanted to believe. Will of David E. George, January 1903, allegedly John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> so, what did you think when you came across that? Well, I was really excited, and of course, immediately I wanted to open it and see what it said. Unfortunately, there was nothing in George's papers to shed any light on his mysterious past. But could this be the signature of Lincoln's assassin? Did John Wilkes Booth, the man who assassinated President Lincoln, find his way to Enid, Oklahoma, and kill himself at the Grand Avenue Hotel? Guess what this building is? I say we go take a look. We adoringly call that the death room, yes. Uh, that is a actually a reproduction of what one of the rooms would have looked like that David E. George died in. This is our building right here on the corner. The Grand Avenue Hotel was sold in 1909 and turned into a hardware store. It was remodeled and many rooms were destroyed. Russ Frazee's family bought the building in 1922. Room number four was approximately right over there, uh, the actual death room. Is there a possibility that you own the building where John Wilkes Booth died? I'd sure believe it, by golly. Not everyone in Enid is so easy to convince, of course, especially former history teachers. The preponderance of the evidence, <laughs> using my attorney friend's words again, uh, just leaves no doubt in my mind that John Booth died on the front porch of the Garrett farmhouse. Whether you believe it or not, whether you believe David George was actually Booth or just some guy with an overactive imagination, you have to admit it's a compelling story. I'm, I'm not one of these kind of people who, who, you know, my mind's made up, don't confuse me with facts. Until somebody proves different, I do believe this is the building that John Wilkes Booth, alias David E. George, died in. I'm not convinced uh, that David George is John Wilkes Booth, uh, but I've read the source materials, uh, I've studied it, uh, I've investigated it and there are some good arguments. In Enid, Darren Brown, News9.com. It's interesting, isn't it? It is, yeah. it is. It does make a great story. Yeah. That